evaluation criteria, and it's a technical document, basically has 20 odd pages, uh, tells you all the questions that you need to ask the vendors, um, and then you can use those questions and answers to figure out which product to choose. Um, uh, I do invite you to join the project, but also tomorrow, and I think in this very room at 8 o'clock, there's going to be another talk dedicated to web application files. And uh, it's uh, about uh, best uh, um, uh, uh, uses, um, how to, it, it's m that talk is more oriented toward discussing organizational issues and how to, uh, to judge whether a web application file is the right approach to use with a particular application. So it's complementary to the, to the WAFIC uh, project. Anyway, so that's kind of a brief introduction to web application files and to, to the, the problem domain. Um, most security is the web application file I started to write in 2002, um, and by now it's, it's the most widely deployed web application firewall. And as far as I, as I know, it's the only open source web application firewall. And um, while I'd like to think that um, the popularity of most security is the result of its qualities, I'm guessing that it's, it has more to do with the fact that it's free uh, and just uh, uh, available out there. So the barrier to entry is pretty low. Um, on the other hand, um, it doesn't have a GUI. Uh, so, and this is by design because I've always thought that people should really know how they're, they're using their, their tools. And if you get a product that's just a black box, that you don't really know what, you, what you're doing. You don't really know if you're using your tool to address the issues that you have in your network. So I think that not having a GUI for a product is a good thing because it forces people to think, it forces people to um, uh, understand what they're doing, and in, uh, in the end that uh, results with, uh, with uh, uh, a better security overall. So back in 2002, I was running a, a software development team, um, and part of what we did is uh, we, were, we, we used to produce web-based software, and I sort of had a, uh, trouble sleeping at night because I was ultimately responsible for the quality, and uh, I knew that uh, we didn't have enough time to dedicate to solving the security issues in, in our software. And this is because of the, the business pressure to deliver a feature, not software. And I'm sure that you will find this in many organizations, if not all. I, in fact, I think uh, you will be hard pressed to find organizations that focus on security and where features come second or. Anyway, sometime in, uh, sometimes uh, in 2004, I started, I started a business around mod security and it was eventually acquired by Bridge Security, the company I work for. And uh, we continue to, to treat op mod security as an open source project, and it continues to grow. In fact, quite a few resources have, uh, uh, have been dedicated, additional resources have been dedicated to it over the years. Um, the way it works, you can deploy it in two modes. You can take your existing Apache web server, and you can just plug in mod security into it. Um, and we're looking into expanding the web service we work with, but at the moment it's only Apache. And uh, uh, the other approach is, of course, to deploy it as a network gateway. What you do is you take the Apache web server, you install it as a reverse proxy, and you add more security to it. And you sort of you get your open source web application firewall that works as a, as a gateway, which is a really handy thing um, and, and quite useful. So here's the most, here are the most important things you need to know about more security. This tool was written as an engine. It was written to empower our users and to give them tools and features that they would allow uh, them to look at HTTP traffic, and basically what I like to call slice it and dice it. So it doesn't, uh, for, for quite a few years, most security didn't come with any rules. And it certainly today doesn't do anything implicitly. Unless um, you tell it to do something, it's not going to do anything. It, it, it tries to, do, to be very passive. Um, a, 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 as much as we can. So if it spots problems, it's not going to block anything. Instead, go, it's going to raise flags, internal flags, which you can then evaluate, and then you can decide what you want to do. So the, the, the overall, the, the idea is that uh, you, have, you are in control. And also, uh, the, the most important uh, part, of course, is, is that we, we, we are documenting everything we know about mod security. So because mod security, like any other tool, has its rough edges, you will find that our rough edges are documented. So what we aim for and strive for is transparency. And this is why I, I think um, uh, mod security is an important uh, tool. And here you are. You've 
taken more security, you've plugged it in, now the question is what are you going to do and how, how, how does more security work anyway? And uh, at the moment we have uh, five different phases which we call, uh, that, that we work at and in, in general you're going to be interested in only two of them. One is the request phase where you basically evaluate a request and decide and look at it and try to, to figure out whether it's valid or not, whether there are any attacks in, uh, in the request or not. And the second phase and the, uh, the second phase is the response phase, where you have full access to the response. We haven't yet, so basically in both of these phases, we've received the full request, but we haven't passed it on to the, the, to the web server. So it hasn't reached the backend application. In the other way, in the response phase, we have all this res in the entire response, the headers and the response body, but we haven't passed it on to the user. So in both cases, there's the opportunity to an analyze data and to block things should you decide to block. But of course you don't have to, so you can do exactly what you want. However, be because we want to allow you to uh, f decide exactly how you want to handle certain things, we have additional uh, phases. One is the request headers, which basically rerun just after request headers, and we allow you to configure how you want the request body to be uh, um, processed. And the other is the response headers, which we invoke just before, just after we receive response headers, but before we actually go and read uh, the response body. Um, the final phase is logging, and this is intended to allow you to decide whether you want to log the request or not. I, you see that uh, uh, logging is, 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 is very important, and um, uh, most security has extensive uh, logging facilities. Now what we're doing right now, um, by the way, the current stable version of Moss Security 2.5. In version 3, we are adding an, another, another orthogonal feature, which is streaming data analysis, where we are going to be analyzing data as it comes in. So this is a, a, is a separate feature, and this is actually what most IDSs uh, would do anyway. This is where they start. So Moss Security has, has kind of evolved the other way. We've, uh, we will uh, evolved um, from a discrete uh, um, uh, analysis of data, uh, uh, now we're going to co be covering the streaming as well. The, advan the, the advantages and disadvantages to both, uh, streaming um, is, is interesting because it, it allows you to not buffer. And in some situations you, you don't really, you wouldn't really want to buffer depending on the application and so on. So I mentioned trans transaction logging and one really nice thing about my security is it actually allows you to decide exactly what you want to log and what not to log. So for each transaction, you can have rules in the configuration that can evaluate and look at it and say, I want to log this or I don't want to log it. And even nicer, within the transaction itself, you can choose which parts are of interest. So if you want to log a transaction that's a, that's a large download, you don't really have to log, it, it, it could be an image. You don't really want to log the, the, the part that's the image. You just want to, to log the request and maybe the response headers, but not the, the image itself. So uh, most security allows this, these things. And uh, what's also very important is we allow for, uh, for sanitization to take place. So if you, have, if you have sensitive data there, you don't want that to be logged. So we remove that data uh, provided uh, the, the rules, the, uh, the rules for that. We remove the sensitive data before logging. And that's how most security avoids being a, a liability. Um, and then finally, we have a tool um, that actually supports multiple mode security sensors, takes all these alerts that we've logged and transmits them to, the, to a central location. Um, as you'll see later, we also have a product, uh, a free product that, uh, that you can use to, to re review this data. So now, uh, you know, uh, about these phases.